Polaris. Star in the sky that doesn't move. The only proof you need that we are not on a spinning ball. Polaris does not move. Supposedly it's aligned right with our north pole, the pole of the earth. And if we lived there, that would make sense that it would not move. But we don't live there. We live on the side of the earth. Even though Polaris never moves. And what I did here to show you this, this is Polaris. I'm in, I did a star app in my garage here. Show you Polaris and we're going over to the sun. We all know the sun moves across the entire sky throughout the course of a day. Setting in the west, so I'm going to show you it moves all the way across. Sets in this western line here. And then, so the sun is here. Polaris is going to be just over here, a little bit more north. And you're telling me the sun can go across the whole sky, but Polaris stays right there all day, every day, years after year? I don't think so. Now the main problem area is up here. All of this going on up here is what's causing me the most physical discomfort. It's like a visceral reaction of discontent coming from this area. This area is not good either. I hate this, but I'm mainly worried about this. Now I get this question all of the time. Why would the world elites lie about the round earth and what do they benefit from this? Now, first of all, you need to understand that knowledge is power. If you withhold knowledge like the secrets of the universe and the intelligent design of where we are over the population, then to a degree, you possess more power than the population. If you can convince the population that we are on this round spherical earth that defies all laws of physics, hurtling through space at millions of miles per hour, you are also promoting scarcity, you're promoting the Big Bang, this all came from nothing, and everyone will slave in their system. When in reality, this plane that we live on was intelligently created by God. With abundant resources, free energy, no global warming, no evolution, no Big Bang, this is what it is. Now, if you understood where we truly were and that we are in the center of this universe and that God created us intelligently and that we were all equals, you would never slave in their system. Now, let's take a look at what the devil worshiping world elites tell you what's going on with this round earth. Eight inches every squared mile or 0.666 feet. Here's the speed, the tilt, the Tropic of Capricorn, the Tropic of Cancer. Must just be a coincidence, guys. People are so brainwashed. They're like, well, they ignore the science over thousands of years. These people are the same people that told you this was good for you. Real science knows that water always finds its level, guys. Gravity's never been proven by science. Density and buoyancy has. And it's time to wake up. You have been lied to your whole life. Peace and love. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, we're not doing that, no. I don't know why you're into this, but we're stopping it right now. We may have solved a biblical mystery. In my opinion, this is the most mysterious conspiracy in history. Many people have started to question mainstream narratives about space due to recent credible claims. There are allegations that NASA has used tricks like green screens, harnesses, and hidden wires to make fake videos of the ISS that were really filmed in a pool. Additional evidence suggests the moon landing may have been staged rather than actually occurring in space. Buzz Aldrin himself has even said, hey, that didn't happen. We filmed it right here in the studio safely with feet on the earth. Couple all of that with the six of the seven deceased Challenger shuttle members who are out there living their best life. Same face his same names. The Bible states clearly there's a firmament above us, an impenetrable dome. God created a firmament above the earth to separate the waters from the waters, and he called the firmament in heaven. So if there's an impenetrable dome above us, space travel is virtually impossible. Some believe NASA was created to divert attention from discovering the truth, like Admiral Byrd's revelation of extensive unknown Antarctic lands after undertaking a forbidden expedition near the South Pole. A year later, NASA was formed. A year after that, the Antarctic the Arctic Treaty was signed by all 12 countries, making exploration impossible. Good morning. Aloha from Tennessee still. This is my new friend Kathleen. Flew all the way here from... Washington State. And uh, she just told me something interesting I wanted to capture. Can you tell us again? Yes. Uh, I was at the event and I wrote down every single scripture referenced by Pastor Dean Odell and it came to 41. And then I referenced every scripture. Uh, that Pastor Locke uh, spoke about, and it was only six. So I guess uh, Dean's claim that he used way more Bible than Greg did is true. It's true, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so well, it was great to meet you and see nice you. To meet you. And, uh, I'm sure we'll see you on Facebook or maybe at yes. the next event. Yes. But uh, God bless all you guys. Remember, um, Flat Earth Banjo USA Japan, I was just telling them about that. Yes. Eddie Allen Carr did these high resolution 
uh, map for the Gleason's map and the shirts. Uh, so check him out, Eddie Allen Carr. He's the author of 16 Emergency Landings, Proving Flat Earth, and his channel is Flat Earth Banjo. So have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> I was hoping somebody out there could explain why apples and oranges seem to be immune from the effects of zero gravity because you have astronauts who seem to be floating in a zero gravity environment on the space station, but you have an orange, a slice of an orange and an apple that seem to be either mounted to the table or just immune to the effects of zero gravity. Then you also have an astronaut floating by in this scene from the TSS, but you have a full glass of water sitting on a table next to a laptop. So they're not mounting the glass of water to the table. It's just somehow immune to the effects of a zero gravity environment. Uh, then they also seem to need a green screen right here for whatever CGI magic trick they're, they're trying to do. And it also appears that they need suspension cables like they use in movies to create the illusion of zero gravity. So somebody go ahead and explain this to me. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense at all. Uh, I think it's just a CGI magic show, but I could be wrong. I'd, I'd love to hear what you think. And then you also have this giant contraption, which is supposed to be the ISS in, in a pool. And we're supposed to believe that that's up there floating in low Earth orbit, 250 miles above the surface. So just make it make sense. I appreciate it. You are being lied to because no one has ever been in space. Let me explain. Some propose a theory that suggests space exploration has never happened due to a concealed barrier enveloping our planet. Beyond this barrier, they propose there's no open space or vacuum. Instead, there's water. It may seem far-fetched, but in 1962, the U.S. government detonated several nuclear bombs in the atmosphere, officially as a test of how the atmosphere responds to such explosions, as they want us to believe. However, some argue that they were, in fact, trying to breach this invisible barrier. Interestingly, this project was named Operation Fishbowl. This theory gains support from the observation that many have noticed stars appearing to shimmer or twinkle, as if seen through a liquid substance, when observed with the naked eye or through a camera. Enthusiasts of rocketry have also pointed out that the rockets we've launched seem to encounter an unseen ceiling, producing an effect akin to what you'd witness in water. Have you guys heard of this book? For the people that actually want to look into the true shape of the Earth, this book behind me is a good book. The first example I want to give you guys that explains that, well, we probably are on a flat Earth is this one. October 2015 was a story of a woman who gave birth during a flight from Taiwan to Los Angeles. Let me remind you guys, this is an emergency landing. So they landed essentially as fast as possible. But where they landed is very interesting. Like they landed all the way up in Alaska. If we were on a ball, Hawaii is just right there. If you take a look at it on a Gleason's flat earth map from Taiwan, to Los Angeles, Alaska is on the way. No, yeah, talking about airplanes, nobody's seeing curvature from a commercial airplane flight. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson admits, you wouldn't be seeing curvature upwards of 50 miles. Here are two official images, yes, images from NASA, one from 2012 and one from 2013 of the Earth. Notice any difference in the United States? And compuscular rays suggest that the sun is probably local and not 93 million miles away. Because these rays wouldn't be shooting out in different directions. It's almost like the sun is right above the clouds. Bye. This right here is my favorite thing ever. In the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake not sleeping because I'm thinking about this. If you want to know the truth of demons and aliens, stick around. I have some really important information for you. I got to tell you about the experiences I've had the past six months, and they all started with him, Dr. Stephen Greer. He has an app called CE5, and what it claims to do is it claims to be an app that if you listen to it, it has certain tones and vibrations, and if you meditate to it, 
you can literally call on ETs up in the sky to come into your vision. Okay, I was super skeptical at first, I didn't believe it, but I was starting to really explore the alien phenomenon. So I tried it. Nothing happened the first time. Okay, I was skeptical, but I still tried it. Nothing happened. Fast forward a couple weeks, I came across someone else and started doing this mantra where I it would help call things in. And all of a sudden, I started having the ability to call things to me. Literally, I would call through telepathy things in the sky to me and I have them on video. There's proof and I wanna show you what they are and tell you what they really are. First, I wanna say stay away from this app, okay? What I experience, you do not want to experience and it is different than what you think. It is not, you are not calling friendly ETs to you. He claims that they have this amazing technology and they can, tr if they can travel from galaxy to galaxy, they have this technology that could blow us up in a nanosecond and if they had evil intent, they would have done that already. It's all a lie. It's all nonsense to get you to call on something else. And I'm gonna get to that, but stay away from this. I'm serious, do not go download this and try this. This is a global diplomatic initiative between humans and these very advanced civilizations from other star systems. We make contact with them and then invite them to interact with us. So these civilizations have been around for hundreds of thousands, millions of years. They know the trajectory. They know that we need a course correction. If you are advanced enough to travel faster than the speed of light under controlled circumstances and go from one star system to here, you have technologies that if you were hostile, you could terminate all human civilization in a nanosecond. And they have not. Look, when I first heard about him and I started buying into it, I was knee deep into diving into proving aliens were real. And what I did was I proved the complete opposite. Okay, what is going on is he is literally giving you the ability to conjure demons. Okay, there aren't other star systems. There aren't other galaxies. There aren't other planets. Everything is local right here. We are in God's creation. And what he is teaching you to do is to literally conjure demons to you. And I didn't realize this at first until I started seeing things in the sky and then I started having demonic attacks. And I want to show you some evidence of this and just please stay away. Do not do this. Do not try this. You are literally inviting evil to you. And I'm going to try to show you how true and real this is. Don't do it. Man's a liar. He wants you demonically attacked. So this was the very first time that I called something to me using just literally mental telepathy and a mantra. And this came out of nowhere and it started approaching me. I didn't have my phone on me and it was coming right at me. As soon as I grabbed my phone to start filming it, it's literally took a different turn in direction, but it is not a Mylar balloon. It is not a weather balloon. It was literally a pulsing orb of light. And I thought this was so cool at the time, but I didn't realize what it was, okay? And I want to show you another one too. So as I said, I thought I was literally calling ET vehicles or UFOs or UAPs to me. I had no idea that they were spiritual in nature. And what started happening to me is I started having demonic attacks while I was sleeping. Literally, I would be wrestling with a shadow creature or a demon and I would wake up and I had never in my life experienced something so real and not dream state, but actually just felt like I was in another dimension. And then I would wake up with sleep paralysis. I literally couldn't move. I was fully awake, fully conscious, couldn't move, couldn't. I tried calling out for my wife who was right next to me. I couldn't talk. All I could do was change my vision. All my muscles were frozen. But I realized, you know, almost right after that first happened, I researched it. And it said, as people are having spiritual awakenings, this happens a lot. They're demonically attacked. Sleep paralysis is strongly related to demonic attacks. So as I'm saying, stay away from trying to call things to you. It is not what you think. Do not do it. Mechanism, the calculation of the lunar orbit and the phases is intriguing. Apart from the phases, it shows the calculation of the moon's position against the fixed stars and finally its differing speed in animalistic months. In the course of the year, the sun moves in front of the starry sky to the 12 zodiac signs. Likewise the moon, but not in the course of the year, but once a month. 
At the beginning, the solar and the lunar pointers overlap. It's new moon. One week further, we have half moon. The sun moved only a bit, but the moon is three zodiac signs further. Another week, we have a full moon. The moon is exactly opposite the sun. Then again, half moon, and then again, new moon. One month have passed now. Sun and the moon are both one zodiac sign further than at the beginning. For the moon phases, we need only two gears. They are attached to the solar and the lunar pointer. There's a crown wheel and the one lunar pointer is mounted on the gear wheel, which has the same number of teeth as a ground wheel and runs in it. Therefore, with each rotation of the lunar pointer following the solar pointer, the moon axis rotates exactly once around itself, indicating all the phases of the moon, one after the other. So, this is quite simple. As we see above, it's the same way reflected in the Antikythera mechanism. You can see clearly, Earth is not in between the Sun and the Moon for the lunar phases or the eclipses, but below it. The Sun and the Moon rotating about us, as seen in reality. And in this mechanical planetarium, the Antikythera mechanism calculates exactly that which is impossible to be shown on a heliocentric model. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni, and he lived from 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also of the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitry from Russia with suggestions of mine, Eddie Allen Carr, known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Banjo. I asked Dmitry to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific Ocean where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tozy, a professional map maker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.